Hi folks, welcome back to some more Solar City Garage. Okay, I've got the engine setting up here. And we just had done the uh, steam holes, head bolt holes. I blew out the oil tube that comes out this hole in the front. It was nice and clear. So what I want to do right now um, is I want to get rid of the tackiness of the motor. A little bit of oil that's on it. I don't care right now if it still has a little dirt on it, but I want to get rid of the tackiness so that when we do the valve guides and the lifter bores, those metal shavings don't stick as easy. And I also want to keep them away from this transmission, okay? Well, transmission's not there, but magneto flywheel and what will be the transmission. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have some Parts Master non-chlorinated part brake and parts cleaner from Auto Value. And uh, I really like it. It, the smell isn't too bad. It is a high VOC formula, so if you can't use it in your area, well, I don't know. Don't know what to tell you. Anyway, this is what I use in the shop every day. It's the most tolerable, so, and it does a good job. So we're going to just rinse off everything back here.
Hey there folks, welcome back to another episode of Solar City Garage. And uh, use my other camera here because I've got something I have to show you. Houston, we have a little problem. So I pretty well gotten done cleaning up the block here and was getting ready to ream the valve guides and the, the tappet guides or lifter guides. And we'll pull this out of here. So I didn't notice when I was cleaning up because everything is, is uh, it's kind of hard to do one handed. So everything was kind of screwy. So this is a 132nd reamer. No, sorry, 164, the smaller one, 164. Because I didn't, when I checked valves, I'd only checked one, should have checked them all. So you see the reamer starts in and stops, just like it should. So there we go. Now the problem is, I wanted just to try one before I did it on video, and I put the reamer up there, and look at there. It just pushes right in. So, that means it's been done before. I thought, well, no big deal. So I measured it. Looked like a 164th would take care of it. So I just happened to have a 164th valve. Stuck it in. Yep, got a little clearance, but not bad. But, I went to push the valve shut and noticed that it doesn't sit flat in the block. Okay, let's get a light here. I'll shine it in the in the hole here and if you can see that valve is pushed clear down and there you can see the light. So I took a valve grinding stone stuck in a guide for the stone and did it. And I don't know how well it probably shows up worse on camera. But as you can see, when they've reamed it, they've reamed it crooked. And the valve seat is not round. Okay, see how it's wider on one side than the other? I just touched it with the stone. So somebody had really went to town on that thing. Um, I think there's enough material there, but the problem is we got a crooked valve guide hole. It's already the biggest oversized valve. So what do we do? How do we get that straight without pulling the rods and pistons and crank and flywheel and uh, convincing the machine shop in the area to put a valve guide in it without uh, dipping the block and all that stuff? The ones around here are pretty uh, pretty touchy that way. So, I mean, I have a, a little lathe and a mill. So I did some thinking and I measured the lifter bore holes, which to me should be completely in line with the valve guide. Because when I stuck the guide in here and stuck a lifter in, they were way out of center. So the hole is crooked more towards the lifter or the cam so so i measured that hole and it comes out to exactly 7 sixteenths of an inch in that particular hole so let's see i bought and here's my theory i bought a very long 7 sixteenths bit but you can see the flutes on the end are short okay so they don't go all the way up the shaft of the shank of the bit here. So my thought process is to come in here from the back side with this 7 16 and because the flutes are so short, the lifter bore works as somewhat of a guide, okay? There's a little play there, yes. And then I'm going to drill from the bottom up through that guide. And as it comes through the top, it, what should really help center it up is it should want to follow the hole the deeper it gets. And the deeper it gets, the more the lifter bore is going to want to keep it 
in line. So then I'm like, well, what do we do about a valve guide, right? We could get a box or a, a chunk of brass or bronze. But then I remembered, this is really hard to do one-handed, folks. I'm sorry for the shakiness. So I looked up from our friends at Goodson. Goodson is a company that sells engine rebuilding stuff and has for years. In fact, they bought out the Quickway valve refacing business. So if you have a Quickway valve refacer and other brands as well, you can get any parts you need for it. Well, in this little box, they have a universal bronze valve guide. The hole that's in it is about 3,000 smaller than the, a stock Model T valve. And I don't remember how big the outside is, but it's, it's pretty good sized. But it says it's ready to put in the lathe, machined down for press fit. So these are actually for a Harley Davidson. Uh, it doesn't say that on the website, but when you order it, that's what comes. So I think if we can get that hole drilled and then we'll just lightly ream it and then we'll measure it, we'll put it on the lathe, make this a couple thousandths bigger so it has a press fit. We'll press it in there and then we'll ream the center hole out. I have a really small set of adjustable reamers. I would like to ream it to a stock Model T valve size. If not, we can go one step up with a regular valve reamer. Put in the, the first step up oversized valve. So, I mean, is this the right way to do it? I don't know. Um, I really don't want to take it to the machine shop. I really don't want to take anything more apart on it because it's already been done. Um, this isn't a race engine. This is just, you know, basically not much more than a lawnmower. Uh, engine and uh, I think this uh, is a lot more complex way that would have been fixed back in the day so I, I think we have better stuff to do it now so I, I'm just going to give it a try the reason I'm staying small like for the 7 16 is that in case I had just totally screw this up I bought another one of these I bought two of these and they're, like I say, they're pretty good size and diameter. Um, if I screw it up, then I'll take it to the machine shop. There'll still be some meat there to take out, and they can install one of these. So we do have a plan B, but uh, I don't know. We're going to give it a shot. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. But uh, we're, I, I think that's going to become pretty close. I think it's going to be a heck of a lot closer than what's there. So, all right, stay tuned and we'll, uh, so we'll see. This video may never make it. If I really screw up, we'll just uh, press delete. All right, thanks for watching.